My Secret Crush, written by Elizabeth Griffin, narrated by Elizabeth Griffin. Part two. I forgot my mother's Christmas present. I left it in my apartment. It was still lying on the kitchen table, wrapped in the white silver gift paper. This day just kept getting better and better. I stumbled in my new heels. I lurched forward, and for the briefest of a second, the ceiling of the hospital began to whirl above my head. Or was I the one spinning and turning out of control like a plastic top? Oh no, oh, I let out a yell. I felt the handbag slip from my shoulder as I fought the threat of sudden floor impact. My eyes widened at the thought of falling in front of everyone. In front of Dr. Murphy. Don't notice me. Don't do it. Not like this, not with my skirt up, not with my legs high in the air, splat! I hit the floor. My bag spun away from me and spread its contents all over the surgical floor. My perfect plan was rapidly falling apart. I felt my dignity leap from my body as if it too tried to escape the embarrassment. Miss? Are you all right? I heard approaching steps and a concerned voice. It was him. I focused my eyes on the blurry distant end of the hall and swore softly. It wasn't supposed to happen like this. Not in front of the entire hospital. Our first meeting was supposed to be graceful, quiet, romantic. I'm okay. I managed to say in a tiny voice, I, I didn't see it happening. I tried to joke. We never do. Let me help you up. He smiled, encouraging me with a gentle hand to my feet. Then our eyes met. The visual contact was stupendous. It was as though two storm fronts had actually collided. I heard the heavens split open. I saw light. I felt the floor rumble beneath me and I smelt the air of success. He was actually talking to me, staring at me, examining me so thoroughly that I thought I was an African diamond being discovered amongst the ordinary rocks. His dark eyes swept across my face. This was not how I had planned, envisioned, but it was an amazing way to catch his attention. The other surgeons followed Dr. Murphy's lead. They were gathering my belongings and stuffing them back into my bag. They were collecting scattered coins, ink pens, glasses. Are you hurt? I don't think so. I said, looking down at my feet and ankles. Nothing twisted or sprained? I hope not. Let me take a look, miss. Uh, Ferguson, Sadia Ferguson. I said, surprised that he would ask for my name. I'm going to feel your ankle for tenderness. Pain, he said, stooping down to examine it. You're going to feel a light touch, a bit of pressure. I stared down at his bent head. His hands did in fact touch my ankle. My eyes widened in protest, but I caught the words in my throat. I waited to see how my body would react to the physical contact. I expected to flinch and say, ouch, but I didn't. The discomfort from the fall was more mental than anything else. Dr. Murphy glanced up from the distance of the floor and gave me the most amazing smile. No protruding bones. That's always a good sign. No tenderness? No, none, I said in a shallow voice. I could still feel his fingers, his hands examining me. He stood up and I realized that he was an extremely tall man. Standing this close to him 
made me acutely aware of all of the disadvantages that came along with admiring him from afar. He was a larger man than I expected and unbelievably handsome. Did he play sports in college? Probably football or wrestling. Where did that thought come from? Did black men even enjoy such a sport? Dr. Jackson Murphy stared down at me. A crowd was starting to gather around us. I felt like the sun in my own universe. One doctor handed me my belongings. Another drew closer to see if in fact I was hurt. Still a third offered his hand and additional support. I smiled weakly and said, I'm fine. I tried to focus my eyes on the face of the surgeon, but my vision was slightly blurred. I could see, however, without my contact lenses, it was a struggle. I panicked a little. How was I going to survive the day without them? I was not technically blind, but I disliked the thought of squinting my way through the day. The idea of groping around the hospital like a Mrs. Magoo was definitely not going to be appealing. The thought did not appeal to me at all. I instantly recall watching the Mr. Magoo show. And as a child, I thought it was hilarious. The animated cartoon character was completely blind. And without his glasses, everything thing was a mess and a blur. And every episode, he stumbled through life and it was hilarious. As a kid, I'd laugh uncontrollably. But today, as I thought about my own situation, I didn't think it was quite so funny. Hi, Sadia. I'm Jackson Murphy, said my rescuer. I think you'll be okay. But no running in those heels, he teased. These floors can be slippery at times, especially after they've been buffed by maintenance. I wouldn't want to see you in the emergency room. I'll be careful, I promised with a slight smile. My heart was thumping erratically beneath my rib cage. The pulse rate at the base of my neck quickened as I became lost in his stare. Take care, he said as his eyes swept over my face one final time before he turned to one of his colleagues. Let's get to the pathology conference room. Dr. Riggs is presenting this morning. He's from oncology. He likes to start off his presentations with a lecture on cytology. The explanation of red blood cells uh, and the reproduction in bone marrow. His presentation should be very informative. I'm interested in what he has to say about the treatment of leukemia and lymphoma. Isn't that the top doc from D.C.? One of the surgeons asked. I heard he studied at Howard Medical School in the 1960s. I watched and listened with interest as the surgeons made their way back to the elevators. The dialogue drifted from the corridor as the men moved and became distracted once more by medicine. I tried to make sense of their conversation as they became completely engrossed in their discussion. I allowed an easy smile to spread across my lips as the corners of my eyes lifted in silent joy. My eyes sparkled as though they had a magical glow. Dr. Jackson Murphy had spoken to me. He had actually looked into my eyes and acknowledged my presence. He had even touched my ankle with such concern. I let out a soft laugh. What a wonderful day this was turning out to be, I giggled to myself as I rushed towards the cafeteria. It was too early to punch in for work, so I decided to order a large breakfast. Probably hotcakes, sausage, scrapple, scrambled eggs, and many, many, many pieces of fruit. Yes, that was exactly how I was going to start my day. This concludes part two of My Secret Crush. I hope you enjoyed this short novella.